So the first topic of the evening that we're going to be discussing is velocity banking and solar panels. Okay. I recently came across um, a really, really interesting person that is going to be presenting to us this evening. Her name is Maureen. She's already on the screen here. She's ready to go. Um, we actually connected through my uh, church that I go to. They have a small business group meeting um, that we do every every Tuesday evening. And so she attended while I was there, connected, um, instant uh, connection that I felt would be very, very beneficial to all of my existing clients and soon to be clients and audience because I've, I, I've had so many case studies, a lot, a lot of different case studies across the country with people who were in the process of getting solar panels or they already have solar panels and how, and how it has helped them reduce their cost of living, right? Able to control a certain aspect of their costs and increase cash flow. And so now I'm able to offer that as a service to my community. And so Marine's going to jump into that. That's going to be one of the topics for this evening. Then I'm going to do an e-commerce store update, right? Just showing you guys um, my progress with the Finance Geek store. A lot of you in here are also building Amazon, Shopify, Walmart stores. So if Alex, I'm not sure if he's in the house, I didn't see him yet, but if he's here, he'll, he'll touch on that. Do some more financial updates, business updates, some Q&A, and then we'll wrap it up. All right. So with that being said, I'm going to pass the mic to Maureen. I'm going to give you the spotlight here and you're going to take it away. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for committing your time. Appreciate that. If this is the first time my people are, are, are seeing you. So give us a little background before you jump into the meat and potatoes of solar panels and how it can help us on, on the velocity banking side. I'll, t I'll, I'll chime in when it comes to that part, how we, how we make that connection. Um, but give us a little bit about yourself, how we connected, right? And what we've been doing and then dive right into the presentation and then we'll open it up to Q and A once you're done. And I appreciate everyone staying on mute during the whole time so that she can get through her presentation nice and nice and effectively. Yeah, thank you. And if you guys have questions, um, definitely feel free to put them in the chat or write them down, you know, as I go through things and we'll definitely be able to get to them. So yeah, Denzel, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to, to learn from you, the financial side, and to be a part of this community and this ministry and to get to know everyone better. Um, I will need co-host, I think, to share my slides too when it's, when it's time for that. But yeah, a little bit about myself. I live in Fort Lauderdale now. I lived in California my whole life till about a year ago and God just moved me across the country. I threw my cats and two suitcases on a plane and just bought everything new over here. And um, I really, really enjoy it. I worked in corporate for 12 years. My degrees are astrophysics and geology from UCLA. So I've always been a science nerd and kind of geek. And then I had some health and wellness challenges in my 20s and I left corporate and became an entrepreneur and had a peak performance health consulting business for years, which was my deep dive in entrepreneurship and starting to really think outside of the box of kind of the programming. I think Denzel speaks a lot into that with you guys and you know, kind of getting out of the, the traditional crap that we're all told and how to grow wealth and have that same job where um, it's just really boxed in. So it was scary and I hired business coaches and and really fell in love with, with entrepreneurship and did a bunch of different things and, and COVID um, hit and I lost my ability to travel and keynote speak for that business. So I got involved in a few different things and then this company, which I'll go into the opportunity for me to partner with Power, which was a solar panel company, re renewable energy platform, really just spoke to my heart because I was always praying for ways to just make a bigger impact and help people in a bigger way. And it's it's just really interesting how God works sometimes now because it seemed so disjointed from everything else I had been doing. And I'm like, wow, this is really kind of tying in back with my original degrees and desires to kind of help the planet with ge geology and renewable energy because for 10 years I worked oil refineries and hazardous waste facilities, cleaning up contamination and all sorts of things. So it's, I'm kind of back in my, my zone of, um, 
obsession, I guess, in science. And I've had a lot of fun since I've joined Power, really learning about the positive impact for solar and the planet. More importantly, though, really how it's helped a lot of people, homeowners, my friends, um, really save a lot of money and, and what's available to them. And it really is the wave of the future. So it's really just a beautiful, I feel like kind of win, win, win for everyone, win for the planet, win for the homeowner. Um, and they're just really having fun with it. So if you don't understand a lot about solar panels and you don't want to learn a lot, you don't want to geek out on that, that's okay. That's my job, but I'm happy to kind of just share um, some basics with you guys tonight about a little bit about what solar is. I'll go into the value propositions, especially relative to this ministry of why it's a great wealth strategy and how it ties into, I know what Denzel is teaching all of us here and then open it up for Q and A. So thank you so much for your attention and time. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay. Okay. Can you guys see that? Yep. Clear. Great. Perfect. Okay. So why is solar your next wealth strategy? I went into my background a little bit already, so I'll skip that, but these are, and you guys are welcome to write these down or take a screenshot if you want. These are what I think are probably the six biggest benefits to going solar right now. So one is the instant cost savings available, and I'll go into a little bit more detail about that. So, you know, every, every dollar we save is a dollar we make, right? So it's going to increase your cash flow right there on a monthly basis with the instant cost savings and reducing your monthly energy costs. The second is the own versus rent concept. So uh, for those of you that already own homes or working up to own a home, right? It's better to own something than to rent something if you have the availability to do that because you are controlling costs, you're fixing a rate in. Eventually, you know, if you own a home, your mortgage goes away and then it's an asset that you own instead of always making someone else wealthier in the process of landlord. Same thing with energy and we'll go into how that's possible with solar. Uh, the third thing is low cost fixed ending versus high cost variable in perpetuity. So I'll dive into the details a little bit more with that. But when you own your energy through solar panels, you are locking in your rate for the next 25 years if you do financing or cash if it's paid off versus utility companies that you're subject to inflation, right? It's going up. We don't really know how much you're going to be paying in five years for your same amount of electricity you use every month versus what you're using now. So it's another way for us to control that asset and keep costs low. The fourth thing I'm going to go into is the tax credits available right now. Why it's a great idea to take advantage of that. Why that is something that the wealthy always do. They always take advantage of incentives and tax credits. The fifth, I don't know if any of you live in the seven states that I'm going to go over, but some states have what is called state specific solar renewable energy certificates that act like stocks. And so you actually get additional cash every single year from the state for how much energy your solar system system on your home is producing. So it is just extra money on the table available. And then the last thing is really just an asset versus a liability. If you don't currently have solar on your home, your energy is a liability. And so we're going to talk about how you can turn that into an asset. So something really quick, I just want to go over how solar works. So you see these beautiful panels I have behind me, right? You've probably been driving through farm areas and deserts sometimes, and you can see huge arrays of ground mounts of solar panels in certain places, or you probably have seen them all over homes, regardless of what state that you live in. So what happens with solar is, you know, the panels go on the roof or on the ground somewhere, and they collect all of the energy from the sun. They go through either inverters or micro inverters on the different panels, and they go through your, um, and the meter is already on your home and it is already equipped to handle solar panels. And so it goes through the inverter and then it converts all of the energy from DC energy to AC energy. So it can be used directly in your home. So during the day, the sun is collecting all of the energy from the solar panels, and then it's going straight into your home to power all your appliances. Every electricity um, you know, use that you have is now coming from the panels and not from the grid. It is connected to the grid. So it is going back to the grid if you produce any extra. And then at nighttime, you still are buying back energy from the grid. So there's a concept called net metering. If your panels actually produce more energy than you need, you get a credit back from a utility company at the end of the year. So another way to make money, they actually owe you money at the end of the year. They do something called a true up. And so when we design systems and stuff on homes, we want to see your utility bill. We want to see how much usage your home 
averages throughout the year. So we can do a hundred percent offset. And then we're able to ask questions like, are you planning on getting any electric electric vehicles in the next couple of years? Or do we need an extension or an add-on? Because we want to make sure we design a system that's going to not only accommodate your current energy use and consumption, but that will also take care of any additional energy use you have in the future. So you can get out of the trap of ever having to buy electricity ever again from your utility company. So that That is how it works. In certain states, a lot of people are getting extra batteries because they want to be completely off the grid. They don't ever want to have to, you know, pull pull any electricity back from the grid or, you know, I don't know how many other people are in Florida. We just went through Hurricane Ian and a lot of people were without power for a while. So if you have an extended battery you want to put on, you don't ever have to worry about that happening again. You have all of the extra energy that your panels have produced stored in your own battery and you can be totally off grid. So that's just a really basic overview of how solar works. And now I wanna go into the utility bills and utility rates. So what exactly are we paying for? If you have never really looked at the details of your utility bill, don't feel bad. A lot of us don't do it. We just get it. It's on auto pay. We kind of know on average how much we're paying. Sometimes we do a fixed rate. Some utility companies offer that where you just know, okay, I'm going to pay 145 a month or average it out. But this is just showing you, this is actually in San Diego where Brenda lives. She's going to speak a little bit about having solar on her home. Um, But this is just the last four years. You can see the costs of kilowatts per hour really, really, really spiking with inflation. So it went up 28% in the last four years. And so this is something that's just going to keep going up shows in 2025. We actually have no idea what the rate is going to be for homeowners. And so it's something that, um, you know, with this unpredictable economy and everything that's going on, energy is the one thing and utility costs that we never get out of aside from food. It's really the guaranteed thing that we're going to have to pay for the rest of our lives. So may as well be able to fix and own how much we're paying and control it versus being subject to just inflation and variable rates with utility costs. And even in California, I know Brenda can probably speak to this. If if you look at the utility bill, you're actually paying additional fees for fire and all sorts of things. So when you look at your utility bill, there's so many other extra charges that they can just throw on there. There's no regulations. They can charge a $7 this, $8 for this, and it can really add up. You might have 70 or $80 worth of fees on your utility bill that aren't even related to your energy consumption. So I challenge you guys to just open up your utility bill, take a look and just really get intimate with kind of what am I paying for here? Okay, so why now? So in 2045 and 2050, there's a lot of different states who have already agreed that they are going to require all homes in that state to be completely solar. So it's really not a matter of if, it's when we're all gonna start converting to solar and clean energy. Uh, California doesn't allow any new builds at this point without solar. I know Miami County is the same way now. So a lot of people are really moving towards this in the future. So if you are able to go solar now and you see the benefit of it, especially with your wealth strategy, now is the time to do it because there's so much money on the table. And also think about Tesla's. Now everyone wants a Tesla, you order a Tesla, it's like a nine month back order. So if you wait a couple years, four years, five years until you're almost forced to go solar, you're going to end up having to pay more because they're going to jack up the price, right? Cost of goods is going to go up supply and demand. You're going to have to wait a long time for installation. So they're going to really take advantage of the fact that people are forced to go. So this is really the time to do it. Also, there is a 30% federal tax credit now available to every single person going solar. So again, I know Denzel can speak into that, why that's a great strategy to always take advantage of tax incentives and tax credits. So this is just free money on the table. And it's a really, really, really great thing to do. Also, talking about increasing the equity of your home, the cost of the solar system is slightly less on average than the instant equity increase in your home's value. So let's say the cost of your solar system is $40,000. 
you're going to get about a $45,000 instant increase in equity in the value of your home. So this is some of the recent statistics. Um, they found that homes with solar are selling 20% faster now than homes without solar and for four to six percent more. So this is the other state incentive I was talking about. I'll show you which states in a minute. So what is a solar renewable energy credit? It is a performance-based solar incentive that allows you to earn additional income from solar electricity generation. As a homeowner, you can earn one SREC for every mega megawatt hour or a thousand kilowatt hours of electricity your solar panel system generates. So here's another slide. So let's just say on average, the average solar system for a, for a family home is around 10 kilowatts. So if you live in the state of New Jersey, for example, and you have a 10 kilowatt system, you get 10 SRECs a year. So you are getting an additional $2,333 of free money every single year from the state of New Jersey. If you happen to live in Washington, DC, you're gonna get $3,950 for that same solar system. So again, if you live in one of these states, I would love to know in the chat. So I can't stress it enough. We wanna get solar on your home now. Well, you can lock in these rates for the Strex. So that's a big- And, and uh, real quick, that last, if you go back to that slide, is that per month? On per, the per year. So you get, it's per year they pay out. So if you have 10, if you have a 10,000 kilowatt system, you have 10 SREX. So it's $233 per SREC. Per okay, year. okay. Cause you said, I heard 2000. That's why I was like, oh, wait a minute. $1,333, yeah. So you're just multiplying each of the, so the SREC price, if an average system is 10, um, 10 well, 10,000 kilowatts, yeah. So it's one SREC per 1,000 kilowatts. So you're getting 10, 10 credits a year, 10 SREC certificates a year. Gotcha. And so how much is one SREC? Like, is it, it says anywhere between five and 500? That's yeah. The, so okay. Yeah. If you look on the right, so they, they kind of change per year. They're like stocks. They kind of go up and down based on market. Okay. So right now, this is the, the 2022 rate. They were actually four times this high, like five years ago. Also, oh, so, so they've been coming down a little bit. They've been coming down a little bit again. So kind of another as more and more people. Yeah. Get sold. Gotcha. Gotcha. So yeah. I know I got clients in DC, so they would be benefiting to say the most. Yes. Right now. <laughs> DC one. Yeah. Delaware still, still a little bit, but yeah, if you happen to live just a few uh, miles down the road in DC, it's a big difference. So again, but kind of one of the, one of the benefits of, you know, why now this is why now, because you're, you're locking in that, that struck price right now, because they are, they are going down as more and more people are going solar. So again, it's not really a matter of if it's a matter of when. And so this is another benefit to, you know, getting solar sooner than later. Okay. So I'm just going to briefly talk about power, which is the company that I am partnered with and why the power platform is really special and unique in my opinion. Um, there are tons of solar companies out there, mom and pop ones. There's also ways that people can finance solar, which in my opinion is a terrible way to do it. And people don't really have great experiences. So with power, we are actually a platform. So we're really a renewable energy platform. And so what that enables us to do is we can work with homeowners. We're like a brokerage. So we don't represent one type of panel, one type of inverter, one type of battery. So we're really able to do case by case and state by state and pull from the best products available. The We have inventory that's always available. We are a debt-free company. We are a $1 billion IPO next year. And so what we're able to do, we do 2,000 installations around the country every month. So we're able to order supplies in such bulk from the suppliers and the companies that we're using in the installers at such a low cost. And we're able to relay that cost savings to the homeowner. And so if there's a product that isn't great anymore, a certain panel system, it's not hurricane rated or whatever, we can pull from different types of panels as the technology increases, as things upgrade, as things change. We have the ability since we are a platform and like a brokerage essentially to always get the best local installers, warranties, products, inverters. And we're like the general contractors. We work with the engineers. We do the whole thing from start to completion and in the home owner is never passed off to anyone else. And so we do have a 30 year warranty. I know a lot of people are sometimes concerned. Well, what if I have damage? And what if something happens in a hurricane? What if something breaks? 
Um, what if I need a new roof? And so everything's completely covered. And unlike some other solar companies I know that have gone out of business where I've had friends that have had warranties and then they can't get any service because that company doesn't exist anymore. So that's one of the, the things that's really unique about power and what drew me to them versus some other companies when I was really considering going into this space. And the other thing I really love about it, you know, we're all here believers always trying to do our part to make a big impact for the kingdom. And so I I really love that they are a public benefit corporation. And so they're really committed to influencing change around the world. And so the mission is to accelerate the adoption of clean energy worldwide. So we are a renewable energy platform. So right now the main focus is solar panels and we can put in electric vehicle charging stations. Eventually we'll be able to do, you know, energy efficient roofs, maybe sell electric vehicles. And so as you know, things change and move forward, we'll be able to offer many different ways for people to save money, go green, help the planet. And so that's awesome. So here's some of the things that we do in companies, uh, nonprofits that we partner with. Um, and again, just one of the reasons I really love power. So this is kind of a cool thing also when you go solar. So not only is it a great wealth strategy for all of us, you get to feel good that knowing that you're also helping the planet too. So here is the, here's just some stats about gasoline not consumed from the dirty grid, the number of trees, equivalent of trees, carbon emissions reduced. So actively building solar clean energy economy in America. So the average solar system avoids, this is just what your house would do. The average solar system avoids six to 8,000 pounds of carbon, which is equivalent to 42.9 acres of U.S. forest in one year or 4,083 gallons of gasoline not consumed. So here's just kind of a brief summary. If you stay with your current utilities, right? Let's say you own a home, you have a utility bill and you stick with them. You're subjecting yourself to all the unpredictable rates, cost of inflation, and you absolutely get no value added to your home. The second thing, when we go solar, zero, zero out of pocket. And I know Denzel can maybe speak into that. So we work with part of with the platform. We have four different um, financing companies that we can work with. So there's so many different financing options that are like cash. So I know when I was talking it and sell, there's ways that the payments are essentially the equivalent of what you would be paying if you bought it for cash. But instead of paying for cash, you can keep that cash and invest it somewhere else where you're getting a lot more money back. And then your solar payment, which will be paid off in 25 years, is you're not paying a ton of money on, um, oh my gosh, why am I blanking on that word right now? APR, what's the, why am I blanking on that word, Denzel? In that, in a, not inflation, oh my gosh, brain fart. Like a mortgage when you're paying the principal. Annual percentage rate? Interest, thank you. Yeah, you're not paying a ton of money on interest. So zero out of pocket options, so it's zero down. You're not paying a ton of money on interest. You're lowering your monthly payments, the payment that you would have on your solar. So let's say your utility bill is normally $400 a month. With the financing options we have, your utility payment is going away. And now the payment for your solar system is half that. So you're only paying $200 a month to pay off your solar system. But over 25 years, that's going to go away. It's the same thing as having a mortgage versus renting. You control it, adds value to your home. And here's some case um, studies right here. So this is one of my friends, Maribel in New Jersey. I just helped her put solar on her home. And you can see I took a screenshot in the top right. So she's going to get close to $10,000 over the next 10 years from the Srex because she lives in New Jersey, right? So based on the size of her system, that's just extra money she's going to be getting from the state of New Jersey, around $10,000. So that's great. Her fat, uh, federal tax credit that she's getting back next year is a little over $10,000. But you can just see if you look at this screenshot on the left. So if she were to have stayed with her electricity bill, she would have over the next 25 years paid almost $62,000 total based on her current usage. Switching to solar, she's now only going to be paying $25,000. So you can see in the yellow bar with solar, it's the flat predictable payments. So she's only going to be paying the same amount every month now for her solar for the next 25 years until it's paid off. Then she basically has free energy. She can also pay it off at any time in advance. The financing companies that we 
work with don't have any penalties for paying it off early. But as Denzel will probably speak into, it might be beneficial for you to take that cash that you could pay the solar system off with and use it elsewhere to have your really have your money be working for you with a higher return on investment. So over 25 years, she's going to be saving that amount of money. Here is Another one, my friend Eric and his wife, Heather, we just did solar for their homes. They have a much larger home. It's almost 4,000 square feet. You can see the difference with California versus New Jersey and just the amount of money. It's 42 kilowatt hours now versus um, I think it was 12, kilo, 12 cents a kilowatt hour in New Jersey. So each state has a different cost per energy. So they're going to be a little bit different, but they're paying almost $900 a month right now for their current electricity electricity bill. And that is just going to go up over time. That might double or triple with inflation in the next, you know, five, 10, 15 years. So with the payment, the payment and the financing that we created for them, they're only going to be paying $337 a month now, and that's for their solar system. So their $896 goes away to the utility company. Now they're paying $337 a month and they locked in their energy rate at about 14 cents a kilowatt hour, and they will keep paying that same rate for the next 25 years and then have no more money going out. Look at the cost savings for them. So it was $446,000 had they stayed with their current electricity um, usage and utility company and not switch to solar. Now that they've switched to solar, they're only going to be paying $112,000 over the next 25 years. And then it's paid off and then they don't owe anything anymore. And then look at the instant increase in equity in their home in the bottom right. So they just increase the equity of their home by $86,000 by adding the solar system to their home. So that's a huge, huge benefit. And then Brenda, who's joining us tonight. So she She's going to speak for a, for a minute or so about why she went solar and, and the benefits she saw. But these are just some of the stats for her home. So you could see um, her equity increased by $28,000 right away. We were able to drop her payments. And so she's going to be saving some money the next 25 years. If she had stayed with her bill, it would have been $94,000. So she's saving some money with that. And then also the tax credits, if you want to speak into that as well, Brenda. So I will let you share for a couple minutes about why you went solar and what you've found so far. Yeah. Thank you, Maureen. I, I am just obsessed <laughs> with going solar now because it really was a win-win. So in the beginning, my concern was I can't afford solar, not knowing that I it's not going to cost me anything up front. And I was concerned that my credit score, you know, is not in good shape and I'm working on that. Well, little did I know like how much more of a bigger blessing this was going to be because now that I'm receiving this uh, tax credit, it's going to put my credit score at a you know such a, a good place. Um, you know, I get to repair that as well. And you know, I, I'm not concerned that my kids are going to be leaving the lights on all the time. I'm always chasing them to turn off lights. You know, like you know, turn off your bedroom light, the living room, and and I have so much more peace that you know now I get to produce my own energy and I don't have to be concerned that my electricity bill is going to be higher in December because you know Christmas lights and decorations go up and now I have no concern so it really brought a lot of peace. Awesome. Thank you Brenda. Yeah thank you. I think that's all that I have prepared. I know I threw a lot of information at you in a short period of time so thank you all for being such a great audience. Um, yeah Denzel did you want to speak into anything first or should we just open yep. up Q&A? Definitely, definitely. So that was really a lot of meat and potatoes. And for my audience, they appreciate that. We like no fluff. Give us the details. Let us know the numbers. And we're able to make better decisions with our money. So just want to do some quick takeaways from what I got, some of the notes I've been taking, how it applies to us as velocity banking practitioners, infinite banking practitioners, those who have policies in place where your debt tools are in place, the way that I see this. And even prior to um, meeting Maureen, um, some of my clients who have solar panels in place and they have um, a certain interest rate on them, oftentimes I'm like, hmm, doesn't even really make sense to really try to pay it off early rather we were taking the cash flow savings from that solar panel 
that they just acquired in their home, the cash flow savings, we were just having it stay parked in their home equity line of credit or our PLOC, right? Whatever debt tool that we're using, using that cash flow to pay off another debt that much faster, get more cash flow, more interest savings. Then you throw the tax credits, then you throw the cash back rewards at the end of the year, all flowing into the line. So nothing changes in terms of how we're doing our numbers all money, all income still flows right into the debt tool, into the line of credit. Then from there, we're pulling it out, right? Pay our bills, dot, 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 right? Pretty simple. And then from what I've done with some of my clients, okay, based on all this savings that we're going to have, and we knock out these debts over here, we leave the solar panel, maybe leave the mortgage. And now we're flowing right into infinite banking that much faster. So that was some of the takeaways that I got from this. Now that I actually have someone that is really, really educated in solar panels. I think it's going to really help us really put a lot of um, these these um, different opportunities in place for us where it doesn't interfere with our strategy. This is one of the very, very few tools where we can actually add debt to our household and it not cost you anything. And then it actually produce a return on investment five to seven years later, but also instant cash flow increase, even though you're adding debt to your household, right? So it's pretty interesting how you add debt, but then it immediately offsets. So there's a, you know, cash flow increase. That was one of the biggest takeaways that I got. In terms of inflation, you're able to monitor inflation on that one particular expense. You're able to control your costs moving forward. Tax credits, the SREC, which is basically like a stock, which is the cashback rewards portion. That's what that equals. Speeds up velocity banking. Who doesn't want to speed up their velocity banking strategy? And it instantly increases equity. So maybe you didn't have enough equity to get the debt tool, well, maybe this could be a unique way for us to get that debt tool if we do have a property, if you know you just moved into something and that could be the case. Not always, I'm not leaning on that, but it's, it's there. So um, my preference in terms of, okay, if I wanna go and, get it, go and get a solar panel, me personally, I would finance it. And um, I don't know what the lowest rates are, Maureen right now, I'm pretty sure they, they change, but can you touch on whether those rates are variable, amortized, simple interest? Do they, do they stay consistent for the life of the loan? If you could touch on that a little bit. Yeah, they're all fixed. We only nice. use fixed. Um, and you know, they would be a little bit higher if you wanted to take, sometimes they, they wrap in the federal tax credit to lowering the payments. So you have a couple options. You can take the tax credit and you can use it to lower the total amount of the loan. And so you have lower rates, but sometimes, you know, and this might be something you can coach people on. It's a case by case basis. It might be better for them to take that money and use it for something else. If they're going to be getting 30 grand back, you know, to do some different offsets. So we can show them the different options. Okay. If you want to, you know, apply the tax credit to the loan, this is what the monthly payment would be versus if you wanted to take that 30 grand and, you know, go get a, a Tesla cash or whatever else it is, pay off, you know, some credit card debt to maybe help get out of, of that hole if people are still at that part of their journey, you know, in their wealth strategy. So there's some different options available. Um, there is, there's a couple, they always change. The rates just went up, but um, they're not always what they seem. A lot of people are like, oh, I want the, the 2.99 or the 1.99% APR, but we can show them the hidden dealer fees behind the scenes. So sometimes like your, your payment might be lower or it might look lower, but you actually added on 30 grand in interest to the loan over time. So it might, it might be that to do this 6.99 that's really only adding a thousand or two thousand dollars above what the cash value would be over time because the dealer fees are you know 28 percent less so it's really just kind of breaking the numbers down and showing people what the different options are and not being caught up with oh hey why are you showing me the 6.99 versus the 2.99 and i can break it down and be like well here's why actually it's when you look at the actual math this is going to save you a lot more money over time beautiful beautiful i i appreciate that that trans Transparency. That's really going to help uh, my audience quite a bit in terms of how we make that decision. Um, in, in this particular community, we always are paying attention to our cost of borrowing. So we know what it is to take a higher rate because we know what we can do with that higher rate. We can manipulate it. We can offset it. So there's a lot of unique ways. If you're someone that's you know here now 
we're catching the replay. I now have, you know, someone that can educate you all around the solar panels, but then you match me up and we run the numbers together to see which option makes the most sense for what you're trying to accomplish. And then just know that in addition to this being a high ticket purchase item, it's also a long-term investment. So we are getting the money back. So it's really, really unique. Um, does anybody have any questions that they want to um, ask Maureen that we have her here now? And she's part of the community. So on other gatherings, you know, we, we might see her more often here now. Um, this is the go to lady for this in regards to solar panels. And then um, what I'll do is actually start providing some case studies on, OK, this is what we did is the mechanics. Once solar panels are in place, here's how we're either paying it off itself or other things to then pay it off, you know, and kind of go from there. Yeah. Thank you. I, I think one thing I, I didn't even mention it and I know tomorrow's Saturday, but since there's not too many people on, if anyone was curious about what this would look like, you know, for them right away, they, they are raising the rates again, October 30th. So if anyone wanted to hop on a phone tomorrow or just have, I have a link or you can book, you know, a call the next, in the next couple of weeks, doesn't have to be tomorrow. I didn't put anything on here, but you can always reach out to me or get my call contact from um denzel I, I totally forgot that they're doing that october 30th but no problem appreciate that there's your calendar link Perfect. do those yeah. panels do those panels affect the roof no they don't affect the roof um they actually strengthen the roof uh, but we do have to have a, a newer roof so we'll work through that we actually if someone needs new roofing um it's kind of a cool thing that we're able to do with power so if we know that you need a new roof we can actually um we have preferred contractors that we work with and we can actually tie the cost of the new roof into the whole cost of the loan and the system and it becomes a part of the project and you actually get the 30 percent federal tax credit with the roofing cost or tree trimming and stuff included in there um okay. otherwise that is one of the questions we'll ask okay we want to make sure that the roof is stable enough you know to hold the new uh solar panel system and that's part of the things that happen like on the overview presentation where you'll be on with me or someone else uh, some of the engineers might be on too and we just go through kind of the options for your home have you help select what type of panels and everything else give you the options what's available in your area and then the first step and brenda can attest to this too is actually send someone out to do a site survey so someone will check the integrity of the roof you know just make sure that everything is good to go and then we can proceed with the project and permits or if you have an hoa work with the hoas so they we were able to handle all that what is the credit score that you need the we're able to work with mosaic which can go they say 600 to 650 it's the lowest right. there's a couple companies so i would say anything above 650 you're probably good to go yeah beautiful anybody else any other questions if not we're gonna transition to the next topic here i think dan te uh put in the chat the miss directly was like what is the average finance cost so Maureen, what do you have a answer for that? What is the average financing cost of a solar panel? Or is it pretty like, you know, from state to state, it varies. It's well, see, it's just, I mean, you saw the difference just with Eric's case study versus someone yeah. else. So it really a drastic difference. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've really never seen it where the cost of the solar system is more or equivalent to what you're already paying your electricity um, bill every month. So, and that's what we're solving for. We're solving to offset yeah. costs, right? Okay. Exactly. So, you know, if someone's bill is $250 a month now that they're paying to Florida Power and Light or SoCal, you know, Edison, um, the paint that goes away. And now the payment, regardless of if it's a 2.99 or 6.99, like the financing options, it's always less than what you're currently paying for your electricity i haven't really seen any other setup but how drastic it is that all depends on the state right with california being 48 cents a kilowatt hour it's a huge difference than in another state where you're only paying you know 14 cents a kilowatt hour right now for energy so got it how about Thank commercial you. buildings we don't currently do commercial buildings yet with power i know they're working on it um and it's something i'm really excited about because i know a lot of my friends that are pastors that own churches and so technically commercial buildings and residential homes so they are on standby so they're the first people i'm going to go to as soon as we open up the commercial division so pray for that i'm really excited about that we just opened in puerto rico i'm actually half puerto rican i've got a lot of family in puerto rico now so it's it's a blessing that we're able to start start um, doing solar in Puerto Rico, but commercial on the horizon. I'm hoping first quarter next 
next year? Yeah, great question. Mm. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. I'm very excited to be in this community and get to know everyone better and learn a lot more. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. I actually got one more question that just came in. Um, regarding the federal tax credit, um, what is the certainty behind that being available year to year? Does it decrease? Has it, or is it set for a period of time and then readjust? Yeah, they actually, so it was only a 26% federal tax credit and they redid legislation over the summer. And so they upped it to 30% and it is going to be 30% until 2032. That's set in stone. Set in stone, unless gotcha. I don't know legislation works and if they can overturn it in a couple of years or something. I don't, I don't really know about that, but that's, gotcha. I'm sure that's what it says right now. Okay. <laughs> so. Cool. Yeah. Cool. And if the loan is, is, is the loan built to reflect the credit, the tax credit in terms of how people, how they price the financing, or is that purely just based off cost of how, how much it costs to actually get the, the panels? Cause his question is said, he says, uh, let me just read it. How he said it. it says, and if loan is built to reflect the credit, the lender will adjust the note question mark. No. So whatever it is at the time that you pre-qualify and sign documents, you're locked into that. Gotcha. Regardless of okay. what may happen with the tax credit a year from now, five years from now, it's at the point. That's why I was just kind of like, Hey, if anyone's curious about going solar now, we can hop on a call tomorrow. Cause even if you want to do it and you pre, if you lock in the pre-qualification before the 30th, then you can still get the lower rates before they go up again. I totally forgot. I got an email earlier this week reminding us all the interest rates are going up again federally. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, no, that makes sense. It's going to keep going up. It might go up another two, three times um, yeah. in the next year. So we'll, yeah. we, in this community, we're aware of those things and we're okay. keeping an eye on, on all that. Yeah. So that's great. But uh, thank you. I don't see any other questions. Really appreciate your time. Maureen. Uh, yes. I'll go ahead. Uh, I noticed I went on the calendar, but you don't have appointments until the 31st. Yeah. So I, let me. I'm going to put, I'll put my number in the chat right here. Okay. So just text me if you wanted to talk tomorrow, we can figure something out. I'm not doing anything specific. So Sunday I'm going to church and brunch and do all that, but tomorrow I don't have anything planned. So I'm happy to, happy to make time. Thank you. Appreciate that.